Hi, and welcome to the show, where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Will Coster. He is a certified financial planner and a certified student loan professional. And he wrote the Kevin MD article, The Public Service Loan Forgiveness Waiver and Its Impact on Physicians. Will, welcome to the show. Kevin, thank you so much for having me. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Sure, absolutely. So uh, I'm a certified financial planner, certified student loan professional, but the journey begins probably in high school for me, maybe even before. My father taught me a lot about personal finance, was always matching my savings account deposits and getting me interested in you know stocks and investing. He was a business owner himself. And he passed away when I was in high school, leaving my family kind of scrambling to figure out how to piece the, the puzzle together as far as, you know, accounts and life insurance and beneficiaries and all of that. So that kind of spurred my interest in helping other families prevent any sort of headaches and, and kind of preventing children from being left without a financial plan. So, so that's where my interest comes from. I joined the Spot and Rantenny team. We specialize in working with medical professionals, doctors, dentists, medical practices, and uh, have been here and uh, really enjoying what I do. So like you mentioned, you do work with a lot of physicians when it comes to their financial futures. What do you say are some of the biggest mistakes that you see them making? Well, I think one common misconception is I'm not ready to work with a financial planner. I hear that a lot because we do lectures to residency programs, fellows, you know, starting attendings who say, you know, I don't make enough money or I don't have enough assets yet, or, or I'm still paying off my student loans, right? And that's a common misconception is I'm not ready. But in fact, we can oftentimes have the biggest impact when physicians start planning early, as opposed to coming to us and asking questions as they're approaching retirement. So give us an example of that. So if you have a physician who's just coming out of residency and they, they come to a financial planner like you, what are some of the impacts that you can make at that point of their lives? Yeah, I think one of the biggest opportunities that physicians face, it's a very unique career in that it, during residency, you're earning an income, but it's nowhere near the income you're going to be making and, and the promise of making as an attending. And that opportunity, that change from a $50,000, $70,000 salary to a $200,000 plus salary is very unique in the world of, and just in the world in general, and gives us a, a specific opportunity to help capture and the opportunity, the, the dry powder to make a difference in that, that physician's and family's lives. So if you were to give one actual tip to my physician audience regarding their personal finance, what would that one tip be? The one biggest tip I have is to automate your savings. Whether, that, whether you feel like you can save every single month or not, starting to get some sort of automation and not leaving yourself up to human nature right? We know human nature gets in the way of a lot of things in life and saving is one of them. So I would say automation. So by automation, do you mean just taking a portion of your paycheck into a 401k in retirement? And do you mean automate into a regular savings account? So what are some ways that physicians can do that? Absolutely, Kevin. That's a great point. So a lot of us think, well, I'm automating my savings in the way of 401k deferrals, and we don't even recognize it, right? Because it's automatically happening each and every paycheck. But we're taking that a step further is automating your savings into different accounts, whether that be an after-tax brokerage, whether that be, you know, just building an emergency fund, whether that be overpaying on a liability and outstanding debt, or, you know, taking that a step further and just diversifying your savings in, in a way that you can automate that. All right. Let's talk about the Kevin MD article that you wrote. It's titled The Public Service Loan Forgiveness Waiver and Its Impact on Physicians. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? I've written many articles in the past couple of years around student loans. Kevin, as many of your uh, audience may know, student, federal student loans have been on an administrative forbearance, meaning no payments have been required and no interest has been accumulating. We've been seeing, and that started at the beginning of the pandemic, March of 2020, and has continued uh, through 2021 and will expire in January of 2022. There's been a lot of changes in the student loan world. The current administration campaigned on the promise of reforming the federal student loan system. And this article specifically speaks to one of those changes and reform, specifically to the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program 
expanding the opportunity to qualify for said public service loan forgiveness. So go into more detail. So what are the, some of the specific changes and practical implications it has for physicians considering this path? Yeah, absolutely. That was very high level, right? Digging into this article and digging into the details. Uh, I, I wrote the article outlining first, what has not changed? Uh, we have to know the, the criteria for the public service loan forgiveness program to understand kind of the article and how it was written. What has not changed is to qualify for PSLF, public service loan forgiveness, you have to work for a qualifying employer, right? Usually that's an academic hospital. Usually they're, they're government organizations, 501c3 not-for-profit organizations. That is a the definition of a qualifying employer as it stands today. That has not changed. 120 payments, 10 years of, of qualifying payments is required as well for public service loan forgiveness. So even if that's doing residency, fellowship, practice, you have to have made 120 payments. That again is not changing. The two biggest changes with this waiver and expansion are the types of repayment plans that qualify and the types of loans that qualify for the forgiveness. So taking that a step further, digging into the types of repayment plans. Previously, under public service loan forgiveness, borrowers had to be repaying their loans on a income-driven repayment plan. A lot of your listeners will know the acronyms of ICR, IBR, repay, E, pay as you earn, pay. Those are the income-driven repayment plans. It's based on the, your income, right? It's pretty straightforward. It's a, it's a formula. It's a calculation. They change different. They're, they're a little different between the repayment plans, but that, that was your category or umbrella of repayment plan that you had to be on for public service loan forgiveness. What has changed is any kind of repayment plan, whether that's the standard or the graduated or extended repayment plan now qualify if you were making payments, 120 of those payments on those plans. And I'll go even a step further. And the reason for this change is there have been headlines all over the place of, you know, 98% of applicants are being denied for public service loan forgiveness. And one of the main reasons is borrowers didn't know what repayment plan they needed to be on mm -hmm. back in 2007 when this program originated, right? And so they thought they were making payments and doing what they needed to. And 10 years later, they were denied for public service loan forgiveness. Even though I'm, I'm working for, you know, my, my hospital system that, that I, I kind of sacrificed maybe on salary for or opportunity in a private practice for the promise of public service loan forgiveness. So they're expanding the types of repayment plans that a borrower could be on. In addition, kind of the other change is the types of loans that qualify for public service loan forgiveness. Back in 2007, a lot of borrowers had what were called federal family education loans. They were through the federal government in a way, but the lender was actually a private institution such as a bank. So it was routed through the federal government. It felt like they were federal because they have federal family education. They have federal in the name. However, they did not qualify for public service loan forgiveness. So doctors and physicians get 10 years down the road, apply for uh, loan forgiveness and realize I have been doing this all wrong the entire time. And now I'm kind of out of luck. So the, the expansion, the waiver has expanded that they now include federal family education loans. And Kevin, I know this is very technical, but I want to make sure your listeners understand. In the past, you can, and, and currently, you can consolidate your federal family education loans into direct loans. That is a different loan program within the federal government. And direct loans are the types of loans that qualify for this public service loan forgiveness. That is still the case. You, if you're a borrower listening, having, you know, thinking you're within this criteria, but had federal family education loans in the past, if you consolidated into direct loans, it would have reset your progress towards the 120 payments necessary. Now, under this expansion and this waiver, you can consolidate your federal family education loans into direct loans and now be eligible for the, the loan forgiveness. For physicians who are in the PSLF program in light of these new changes, what kind of questions should they be asking themselves to determine what the right path is for them? Yeah, that's a great question. So the first, as I mentioned, the things that have not changed, that's what I would just make sure you're understanding. Am I working for a qualified employer? Have I been working for that a qualified employer? It doesn't have to be the same one, but have I been working for a qualifying employer? for at least 10 years. 
And have I been making payments, whether they're any type of payment, for, again, 10 years? Those are the first two big criteria. The second is, if I have met those two criteria, have I done any of the steps necessary to get my paperwork in order for the public service loan forgiveness program? Kevin, I met a, a physician recently who had just never really considered this as an option. They met our firm, met myself, and we told them, hey, you're actually right in the crosshairs of who might be eligible. And the next step that we took was going back to their residency program, going back to their fellowship program, two different programs, and going to the hospital that they're currently working as an attending. And we, we got the, the paperwork necessary signed by representatives at those hospitals that could verify that this, this physician was working for that program during these dates. We then turn around and submit that paperwork to Fed Loan Servicing, who is currently administering the public service loan forgiveness program. Now, if physicians wanted more resources in terms of the changes in the program, where, they, where can they look for those? The, the best resource that I know of is studentaid.gov. Mm -hmm. That is the Department of Education and Federal Student Aid's uh, dedicated website for all things student loans, whether that's repayment, whether that's public service loan forgiveness, whether that's just giving information on recent developments and changes. Studentaid.gov is a great resource. If there are any details that you need around your loans, your servicer is a great place to start to get specifics on your loans. And if your servicer doesn't know the details or you can't find it, then you can go a step further and go to the National Student Loan Data System. We're talking to Will Coster. He's a certified financial planner and a certified student loan professional. He wrote to Kevin in the article, The Public Service Loan Forgiveness Waiver and Its Impact on Physicians. Will, as I'm sure you know, the cost of medical education can approach hundreds of thousands of dollars and most medical students are going to be on this path of student loans. As they embark on that path, what are some top tips that you could share with them? The, the top tips that I would give to anyone embarking on the student loan repayment path, even those who are, who are borrowing money currently in medical school potentially, is to consider all of your options. I would never suggest to a, a medical resident or a fellow or, or anyone that has student loans to exclude any of their options from consideration. Uh, many borrowers don't maybe trust the federal government or trust that the public service loan forgiveness program will be around and, and just want to refinance and take on their student debt themselves. I'd say right now, it's important to be able to recognize there's a, a process called negotiated rulemaking that could bring widespread change to the federal student loan system. If we take those loans and refinance them and make them private, none of those changes will apply. You'll lose out on any provisions. So I would say never never count any option out. The, the second I would say is take ownership and, and do some research and, and fill out paperwork and, and don't be afraid to, to call your servicer and to, to be patient as well, right? We're, we're asking these large bureaucratic institutions to process paperwork and get things right. We know there are gonna be mistakes and I would say advocate for yourself. There's oftentimes that I find myself on the phone with a loan servicer advocating on behalf of one of my clients. And we find that just with a little bit of pushback and, and advocacy, we get the change and the answer that we were hoping for. So those are some tips that I'd, I'd give to um, any of your listeners with, with student loans. And my final question, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Kevin MD audience, I'd say, don't be discouraged by your student loan debt. I, I think with proper planning and proper foresight that your student loan payments and your student loan balance will not get in the way of your success long-term financially. I'd say to pursue the opportunities that you want, regardless of the impact on your student loans, whether that be a private practice and exclude you from certain programs. I'd say your satisfaction as a physician and, and avoiding burnout as a practitioner is much more important than the financial aspect. And hopefully that's something that we preach to our clients and that, that you feel supported in as a, as a very vital part of our, of our economy and our, our lives. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you, Kevin.